Okay, good morning students. Today we shall go to the topic, the prevention of cancer. And what we'll be studying today will be the levels of prevention, which you have actually studied in your first year community health nursing. And I hope the levels of prevention are clear by now. So anyway, this is again just a review session, uh, which you, which I'll be really briefing about what are the levels of prevention and what really happens in each level. In, an, in your examination, when you have this question coming up, I expect you all to draw this as it is, the, the, the diagram, the levels of prevention and how you mention each level. And below that, you can just briefly mention about what each level actually does. All right, so we can, so the levels of prevention are mainly primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. So these are your main levels. So now what exactly is prevention? Prevention means you're just actually preventing the disease from actually occurring. So you're trying to stop something before it actually occurs. And that is exactly what you're doing even in this oncology uh, situation or patients who have this oncological conditions that even before the onset of the signs and symptoms, we are trying to actually prevent the disease from uh, getting worse or even before the symptoms are aggravating. So the whole idea is teaching the patient, the family and the community about how to prevent any disease from occurring. Now the primordial prevention, what it actually does here is you are trying to minimize the hazards of health. And now for example, even in the current scenario, when we are talking about COVID, it's like we all know the seriousness of COVID and we know how, what is really happening, how it affects a human being. But now the healthy individuals in the community or in the society or in the nation, what are we trying to do? We are trying to prevent it from occurring. We don't want the disease to come to us, right? So we are trying to do all the preventive uh, strategies before the hazard actually happens to any individual. So that's exactly what happens in primordial prevention. So what really happens at this stage is you are actually providing complete health education and advice. So especially when you're looking at even a community level or when you're dealing with patients having this oncological condition, you will be actually educating the patient and the family and you're trying to give them all kind of information, be it any way, like, you know, whether it's in the, in the form of a pamphlet or you're going towards the community or talking to them, you're counseling them, you're educating them, any means the whole idea about this primordial level of prevention is you want to prevent it from actually even entering your community area. So you don't want that uh, disease to even touch your surroundings. So that, that exactly happens in the primordial level of prevention. And in the primary, again, what happens is the whole population, selective groups and healthy individual, primary care advice as a, as a routine consultation. So here what happens is prevent the disease well before it develops into the actual disease itself. So you're trying to reduce the risk factors. Okay, so we know that, okay, primary prevention, what happens is, you know all the risk factors for any disease, for example, now when you know why the uh, cancer occurs, we discussed this in the last session about your uh, physical external factors, your uh, internal factors, your environmental factors, your genetic factors, and all these are your contributing uh, risk factors that actually leads to this particular disease. So what happens here, those are the risk factors. So you're really telling the, you're trying to uh, reduce that risk factors from coming to the individual. Okay, so you're trying to highlight the importance about what it actually does and how you're going to help an individual understand the importance of what are the risk factors or how the uh, cancer disease actually, um, you know, onsets or actually begins in an individual. What are the real causes for it and all that kind of things you're going to be telling the patient or the individual in the community and you're trying to prevent the uh, disease. Now, in the primary, so the main exam, uh, the idea is you're going to be educating the patient and the family. You're trying to avoid the known carcinogens. So carcinogens, as I discussed in the last session, was nothing but the substances which actually cause the cancer. And you know, the whole role of the oncology nurse is to provide sufficient information and education. So be it you're doing home visits or you're trying to uh, give it through pamphlets and information and any kind of ways that you're trying to reach to the community or to the public and giving them this information about how to prevent this uh, disease from occurring. Early detection of cancer requires a basic understanding and etiology and epidemiology of the disease. So etiology, so what happens is in this primary, you're trying to tell the patients or you're trying to educate the patient about what are the actual causes of cancer 
and how much it is actually going on, what is their importance, how much it is actually a killer disease. So all this importance you are actually telling the patient and the family and that exactly what happens in your primary level of prevention. Again, this actually tells you what goes on. So prom you're promoting the risk factor awareness. So you're trying to bring it to the community about how uh, dangerous this particular disease is. Like for example, in this situation, it's cancer. So you're just bringing that awareness to the public. You're telling them about entire thing, how it actually begins. It is all because of your um, risk factors, which is nothing but your environmental, your internal factors, your external factors, your uh, occupational factors, everything. No matter you're going to be dealing with uh, your occupation when it is dealing with chemicals and radiation when you're exposed a lot for all these so then it, be, it these are all becoming your risk factors for the particular disease so you're going to be basically create an awareness among the people changing the behaviors now you're uh, alcoholic you're a tobacco you know uh, user so all this other kind of um, things that you're going to be telling the people to avoid so you will be kind of preventing the disease promoting healthy behaviors limiting alcohol consumption also vaccination, how important it is. And this is the reason why we say do not skip your vaccinations and make sure it is done it done timely. So the vaccination schedule must be followed. And these are all the importance of having your um, vaccinations on time. So it, it will prevent you from, um, you know, coming into, uh, uh, into a situation where you kind of get this kind of deadly diseases. Teaching skills for early detection programs promoting participation in detection programs. So again, how would you do this? So now you know that for early detection of cancer, again, everybody knows like how we promote in the community because it, it, it can affect both genders, so women as well as men. So how you're going to be as a community health nurse, how you can be educating the women about, you know, the breast self-examination as, as well as the importance of mammography. So it's nothing but using the radioactive or the radiation process where you will be able to find out if there's any kind of growth of tumors in the breast. So that is what is a mammography. Again, again, what you'll be doing is the importance of the screening. Again, you will be telling about uh, the people. So anything that you find abnormal, like any growth or anything what you see in your body, it's, it's important that you bring it to notice to the, or you get it consulted. That's very important. So you know that something is there because you know that in oncology, there are two situations, which is benign and malignant. So at the benign stage, we are safe. It, it does not create any kind of seriousness there. But when it goes into the malignant stage, you know that most of your cells are affected and the disease literally spreads drastically. So we don't want that to be occurring. So that is important about how as a nurse, you will be teaching your patients or the community about the early kind of detection. The secondary prevention, as we know now, this is like a preclinical phase. So what happens literally, and when you say what happens before the clinical stages, clinical stages is nothing but once the patient is in hospital, you're getting really treated for the particular disease. So what happens in the secondary prevention is basically the screening activities. So screening, which is very, very important, which I'll be dealing in the next slide, what it is. So secondary prevention, actually the whole, the main strategy is screening and early detection programs. So why do we do it? It is to identify early cancer and its development. It's also to improve the outcome of the disease that has already developed. Means what? Maybe the person is showing the signs and symptoms, but what we have to do, we can't let it grow. So we want to just put a stop there. So once you know that, yes, I can see some growth in this patient and why this is happening. So as a nurse, it's your step to understand why this is occurring and you will be screening this patient and you will be sending this patient for some kind of detection. So you will be doing a radiation check and you will, with all the tests that are available these days, you will try to find out what exactly is the situation of, the, of this particular growth or is the location, how the cells are, how it is the location is, how the size is, is it really increasing, the color when it's related to your melanomas and things like that. So that is how you will, as a nurse, will be screening and sending the patient for early detection. And the whole idea about screening, the secondary prevention is to reduce the morbidity and the mortality rates. So as we all know, once you know that something is detected early enough, you can start offering the treatment. So the disease will not progress into such a stage where there is no remedy. So that is the whole idea. The tertiary level of prevention here is nothing but the real clinical phase. So the patient is literally in hospital and getting all the kind of uh, treatment there, be it, as I told you, medical, surgical or radiation. Because you know that cancer or oncological patients go into all these three, medical, surgical, as well as radiation. Medical in the sense, if it can just, just be the chemotherapy, surgical maybe it sometimes requires removal of particular kind of growths or tumors, and radiation is also important so that you prevent the disease from actually spreading to the rest of the body.
So that is what happens in radiation uh, in the tertiary prevention. And this, the main um, strategy here is the use of treatment and the rehab programs. So after this, and the rehabilitation is nothing but once the patient, okay, is kind of recovered from the main drastic illness, then it is nothing but the rehab, how the patient gets back to his normal form of living. Okay, so what happens there is stopping the disease from getting worse and after the disease has been diagnosed, the follow-up, chemo prevention as well as prevention of subsequent tumors. So we don't want, once the tumor has actually started in one particular portion of your body, we don't want that to be spreading. So that is a, um, a you know important role of a very intelligent nurse to really know that okay you have you're seen this patient, you have noticed that some kind of growth in the upper, upper portion of the um, body. Now we don't want that to be spreading to the other, other parts of the body and you know kind of uh, making the patient deteriorating okay, or debilitating. So we don't want that happening. So that is exactly what goes on in your tertiary levels of prevention. Now this is a diagram actually just showing you what really happens. So how it all begins. Now, when you're exposed to the carcinogen, which is nothing but when you're exposed to the risk factor. And the risk factors are as many as I've already just discussed. And what happens there? So, at that time you, is what you do your primary prevention. Because especially when you know a person who is much dealing with an occupation where he has to deal with chemicals or you're a person who was almost in the sun, like, you know, doing your job, exposure to the sun, that is also important. So, that is also a risk factor. And again, the chemicals and any kind of occupation which involves all this kind of, um, you know, chemicals and substances that you're being used, all these kind of prove to be the risk factors for this. So what happens there in primary prevention, improving your physical activity, a good diet, tobacco cessation and sunscreen use. Because tobacco cessation means what? Stopping the use of tobacco and alcohol. And sunscreen use because basically you don't want your body to be exposed to the harsh radiation of the sun. And again, now this is the second level where what happens, the cancer has actually progressed. So you can see the cells, how they are kind of increasing or multiplying. So this is what it is and what has happened now. And that becomes your almost the secondary prevention. So at, at this stage, what you'll be doing is thorough education. You need to explain to the patient and the family what is actually going on. What is the importance of this disease? Why this has occurred? But there's no need to worry because we are at this early stage or initial stage where we can actually kind of detect it, uh, what is going on, and we can make sure, yes, you will be kind of uh, coming back to your normal phase of life. So at this stage, what we'll normally we kind of do is um, NSAIDs, which is nothing but, can anybody tell me what is this? NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, Clon colonoscopy, mammography, pap smear, as well as endoscopy. So all these are the different kind of tests that you're going to be doing, which is nothing but your early uh, detection as well as screening happens at this secondary prevention. In this diagram you can see that how the cells are being replicating, multiplying and it's actually really going towards a um, malignant stage. So that is nothing but the metastasis. So uh, towards a t this end of the disease means you know that yes it is critical and it is actually progressing. So that level of prevention what you would offer when a patient comes to you at this stage then you will be offering him the tertiary level of treatment where it's something but which is including your, as I mentioned, your medical, your surgical, your radiation therapy. And once he's out of there, then you'll be offering him the palliative care or hospice care and all that you should be learning in your subsequent sessions. Now, what is screening? Screening the term, I hope you have all heard. So screening actually means you're checking the body for cancer before the person actually have or shows any signs and symptoms. So that is simple, yes. So screening means you're actually bringing the person and getting him tested. So we don't want that particular growth to actually kind of invade his entire body. So that is what happens in the screening. And getting screening tests regularly is very important at these days because I think these days everybody know how much, you know, the cardiovascular diseases are really becoming a killer. At the same time, we know that even this cancer is actually the killer. So screening and early detection really plays an important role. And again, we know that how as a community nurse or as a basically as an oncology nurse or basically I would say as a nurse, even you can be teaching your family as well as your community or any patients you come across just basic education about how important it is to get timely medical attention is very, very important because you know that once you are under, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the scan, like which means somebody is actually looking at you, you've gone to the hospital at the right time, you've got yourself treated at the right time, which is just the initial stages of the disease, you can assure that yes, you will be able to come out of this disease in a much
much better way than expected. So treatment is, um, is the best way because once you know that uh, screening tests are done, then the treatment also is likely to work at its best because you know that yes, the disease hasn't progressed, most of the damage to the body has not been occurred or has not been done. So cancer screening is recommended for some people who are at high risk as well because and I wouldn't say who are some people for everyone these days because it, especially because of our lifestyle, the sedentary lifestyle, the kind of food habits we have, the amount of junk that we eat. So all that really contributes to this kind of, these are all the risk factors. So it's really important we watch ourselves, what we are doing and the screening plays a very important role. So even when you go out there, it's better to just have a general or basic talk to the, not only to the patient, but to the family as well, because we don't know what's going to happen to them. So as a nurse in a hospital or any kind of settings, it's a basic responsibility or the role that you actually uh, teach the patient as well as the family regarding the importance of screening. Now, what is screening and why does it have to be done? It's the whole idea is to detect cancer before the symptoms actually up, appear. Okay, so what, what does it actually include? So I hope this sentence is clear. To basically to identify the kind of cancer or the kind of growth or the tumor that is occurring in a patient before the symptoms actually aggravates and shows up very um, drastically. So the, it may include several blood tests, urine tests, other, um, you know, any other kind of cytology and histopathological tests. Many kind of tests are involved because you need to really know the condition of your cells which are the basic function, fundamental, you know, unit of your body. And this also involves the medical imaging. The benefits of screening is nothing but prevention, early detection, as well as following the subsequent treatments. So with this, I think it is very important because once you know that um, you have actually uh, screened the community or screened the patient at the right stage, it is really important that you can, you can start, um, you, it's important you tell the patient also to do a thorough follow-up. Follow-up is very important because it's very important, as I told you, in the primordial stage itself, you're trying to prevent the hazards from occurring. So at that stage itself, it's nothing but education. So education, education, and education. The more you talk to the patient and the more you educate the patient as well as the family, it's very important that they understand the importance of the disease, the um, why that you're insisting on screening and early detection. So it's important you kind of instill into their minds the importance of all these so that the disease can be prevented and prevent and it can also be, uh, you know, we can also prevent the complications from occurring. I think that's all for today's session. So we have really learned or really brushed up what are the levels of prevention, which is primary, secondary, um, tertiary, which are the main levels. And also we all learned about what is screening, the importance of screening and why do we have to get it done. Thank you for today's session and we shall continue in the next session.